Keith came along and that was it. I was blinded by the light. Keith had exactly the same sensibility. I wanted to play a Keith Jarrett. Mm -hmm. He had that extra bit of ornament, ornamentation that the other guys were not into. You know, like somehow he played melodies that remind you more of Liszt or Brahms or he just had a different way of approaching the lines which absolutely resonated with me. And what he did always resonated with me and I couldn't figure out why. And then one day I got a very interesting clue about it. I was living in Boston, going to Berkeley. And I was playing for weddings and bar mitzvahs up there, but they call them up there GB gigs, general business gigs. Mm -hmm. And I'm playing with this old Irish bass player, Teddy Pendleton or something like that. I mean, the guy could, you know, boom, boom. And, and it's, the gig is really a drag. I'm sorry, he's not, probably not with us anymore, so I don't think he'll mind. He's right up there. The gig was a drag. And all of a sudden, uh, you know, we're sitting there like that, and I'm dragging this thing along, and he goes, did you ever hear a Keith Jadot? <laughs> and I went, what? Yeah, certainly, of course. He said, he used to work for me, because Keith lived in Boston for a while. He did? He said, Keith Jadot was the best society piano player I ever heard. And then I realized our connection. Wow. He had done that stuff. He probably heard... Jose Aturbi, uh, who was the guy who used to play the, uh, the chords up here and the, double the melody two octaves or three octaves down hmm. and was famous for it. I can't think of his name now. But I listened to, you know, he heard all that corny stuff and synthesized it into the most amazing stuff. So I was way into Keith. And I would say that's the way it remained throughout the 70s.